Welcome to the Drama Time Podcast, where two girls who rant and rave about dramas we're currently watching. We're not experts, but we are drama holics. We're here to give you balanced and sometimes unbalanced opinions. I told y'all, we're not experts, so don't be surprised if we make mistakes or mispronounce something. We're just two friends on the phone having a good time. We cover important themes and also ship our favorite couple. So tune in if no one else understands your drama obsession. We're your girls. Recently, we started watching The Golden Spoon, which premiered in 2022 from NBC. Glory, why don't you start us off with a recap of today's episode, then we'll give our overall thoughts. We're introduced to our protagonist, Lee Sung Chan. He's an impoverished high school student at an elite school. He's portrayed as extremely intelligent and ambitious, working multiple jobs. Unfortunately, Lee Sung Chan is made aware of the prejudice and classism within his school, which is related to income, class, and status. He's bullied both physically and emotionally by his peers and made to do their homework assignments for menial pay. We're also shown that his best friend, Jun Sok, has recently committed suicide along with his family due to them having large debt and also due to plans by Dongjin Group to take over the neighborhood. One day, Song Chan encounters an old woman with a golden spoon who tells him that he can change his fate if he eats three meals at the home of a wealthy student using her golden spoon. This would then allow him to change parents. He then finds himself at the home of Taeyong, who is the heir to Dongjin Group. Taeyong is the top dog at the school, we're told that he's a billionaire. He's not necessarily a bully, but he is an arrogant jerk. He's struggling to live up to his father's expectations. Song Chan is able to become close friends with Taeyong, and they develop a seemingly quid pro quo relationship where Song Chan does Taeyong's assignments that are given to him by his father, and Taeyong then pays him. The two seem to form a budding friendship, but then Taeyong's father finds out about the friendship. He then threatens his son with sending him to the United States. This triggers Taeyong and it propels him to get rid of Sung Chan at his school. A school meeting is called and Taeyong falsely accuses Sung Chan of extortion and his family is requesting that Sung Chan be expelled from the school. The two kids then meet up at night and Sung Chan is able to get a confession out of Taeyong using his cell phone discreetly. The two kids then end up fighting, and Song Chan falls over a bridge, despite Taeyong's efforts to help him. It seems like our protagonist will drown, until all of a sudden he sees a golden spoon floating in the water beside him. He then finds the will to save himself. The first episode ends with Song Chan appearing at Taeyong's home for the third time requesting a final meal. I love this episode. I didn't really know what to expect, and I usually don't watch dramas that are this melodramatic, but I'm here for it because it reminded me of, I don't remember if you saw Secret Garden, but just that kind of fantasy type of story, it really spoke to me. But I really loved how all the characters are so complex, and there's no, besides maybe that one girl, Chuhui, everyone else is really complex, not just good or evil, except for the bullies, of course. I like how in the beginning it starts and it talks about how people are not really equal. That is actually a facade where some people are born with golden spoons, like those rich kids in his high school, and they already have a leg up. But people like him that are poor, they have a dirt spoon. And it even shows how they're driving off after school in their luxury cars, but he has to... Right, on his little scooter (laughs) delivering... (laughs) So that was a really cool contrast, but I really like how this show like addresses classism and high society. It's reminding me also of I don't know if you saw Parasite. It was reminding yes, me of that yes, also. I definitely got Parasite vibes from it. So what did you think of the show? I also really liked it. I thought the writing was really well done. It did a great job of pulling us in. I also think it did a really good job of letting us know our main protagonist mindset. So right. They, they let us know this is how he's being treated at school. He's being abused. He's being treated like he's less than from the beginning. He would really benefit from therapy, honestly. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
You know, he comes from a horrible home life. His friend just committed suicide. He's being kicked and punched and he's spat on by his peers. It's a lot to handle. And he has this one driving factor, which is getting rich. That is his one goal that, to me, that's the one thing keeping him going. He's very determined to make it to SNU so that he can get out of his situation. And I think to him, that's what makes it all worth it at the end of the day. Okay, if I can get money, none of this other stuff will matter because I'll be rich and I'll be able to take care of myself. I'm not used to a character like him. Yes, he's hardworking. Yes, he's ambitious. He's not really a dreamer. Usually when people have dreams, they want to accomplish, like, I want to be a lawyer or, you know, whatever. But he just wants to be rich. And I thought it was really interesting when he had that conversation with his coworker, Chuhui, how she was saying, I want to be a novelist. (laughs) And he was like, I just want to be rich. (laughs) Yeah, I think he understands that wealth Wealth opens doors, so it doesn't really matter what exactly he's doing, as long as he's making enough money where people can not can no longer treat him like he's trash, then, you know, he's fine. Drew, he, we're told that she basically comes from money. She has the open space to dream like that. He doesn't have that. He's not afforded that privilege. Right, and I thought it was interesting that they made those kind of aspirations a luxury or a privilege. Because I think the reason why he is the way he is is because his father is a failed web cartoon artist. His father is really talented. When they show Taeyong watching his cartoons mm-hmm. or reading them, his father is talented, but he doesn't have any money. So it doesn't matter how passionate he is or um, what his dreams are because he's just poor. Just the way that he's being treated. I mentioned before that sometimes people think that, oh, if you're getting treated, you're exposed to prejudice or you're getting treated badly, that it would propel you to behave in the opposite direction. But actually, a lot of times that can, it almost molds you. You might start thinking like the oppressor because they're the ones with the power. So he can't even help identifying his peers by their status. He does it at the very beginning. He also said that while we were watching it too. He can't help thinking like that because that's all he knows. He sees the people who have money have power and they can do whatever they want and people like him who are suffering and struggling and he doesn't want to be on this side. He wants to be on the other side. Let's talk about his friend, Jin Suk. We're introduced to Jin Suk. He goes into the store and they're goofing around and you can see that they're friendly. And I knew immediately, I knew something was off because he tried to give him that shoes and he played it off as joke. But I was like, no, he really did want to give you those shoes. Mm -hmm. And I I remember when people sometimes are going to kill themselves, they'll try to do dramatic gestures to give away their prized possessions and leave notes. But I thought it was so insane that his whole family committed suicide because of their death. The people who wrote the show are saying that's how bad it is to be poor. Because they're yeah. always showing us how difficult it is to struggle. And the rich people can get away with beating up a kid in broad daylight. They're mm-hmm. bullying the crap out of him. They're spitting on yeah. him. He's yeah. bruised. They're dumped around too. They all see this. And right. And the father, remember the father was watching the whole thing from his car. Mm-hmm. And that was crazy. And he smiled when Sung Chal picked up the money. And that just shows what kind of sick, twisted man he's going to be. I'm ready for him to be all kinds of evil. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's so unfortunate is that he doesn't even value anything about Sung Chan. Sung Chan is extremely intelligent. His son could learn mm-hmm. from him. But rather than even taking the time to get to know him, he just sees him as poor. Therefore, he's worthless. Therefore, he has nothing to offer. Yes. That conversation between Taeyong and his father when they were in the car... His father has such unique perspective where he's trying to define friendship not as someone who's kind to you, someone who values you, someone who's there for you, or that you have common interests. But he's just like, no, someone who's worth your time. And so that's his criteria for friendship is just their income and what they can do for you. He's molding his kid to be like that. And it's interesting because it doesn't seem Taeyong is getting it. Like, to a degree via threats but i don't think any of his real lessons are sinking in right and he's still young so you know 
I yeah. imagine his father went through a similar training. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're catching Taeyong at a time where he still hasn't fully gone to the dark side. But that was crazy. Our female lead recognizes or at least had some type of friendship with Taeyong at some point. Yes, yeah. It's kind of hinted at that maybe they dated or somehow mm-hmm. they, they were close at some point in the past. Before she went to the U.S. and now she's been expelled and she's back. And we're not really sure what happened. But they do show us a clip that she was fighting against racism or something like that. Mm-hmm. So she's different from all of our other characters. Because she seems to be naive and optimistic. Mind. And yeah. definitely brighter compared to everyone else is like really dark. Yeah, like driven by her morals. She just seems like a happier person than the majority of them. Right. And I think it's interesting because they, Sung Chal and Taehyung both kind of hate their dads. <laughs> it's like two opposites of the same coin. I think we mentioned it before that it would, Taehyung would probably be happier with Sung Chal's dad. <laughs> he would because he's, he also likes to draw and he's, mm-hmm. I mean, Living in the house he lives, he is a jerk. But I think if he he had Sung Chal's upbringing, I think he would have been a different person. I think he would have been maybe a nicer version of Sung Chan. Yeah, that's definitely possible. And then Sung Chan actually has a lot in common with... The evil dad, father. right. Yeah. <laughs> They're both really ambitious and willing mm-hmm. to do whatever it is to get what they want. And I don't think that Sung Chal realizes that even though those bullies are bad, he doesn't see that he has the darkness in him also. I feel it's in- inevitable, though. You can't treat a person like that for years or for ho- for however long. And he hasn't seen any type of justice inadvertently teaching him that, like, that's the right way. Nobody's correcting any of this. I haven't even seen a teacher. The classroom is always just the kids. I don't know if they're trying to imply that the kids are low-key running the school. The teachers have yet to be seen. There's, like, no real strong adult figure besides the parents. That's a good point. I haven't seen any teachers. The parents are all kinds of messed up because Sung Chun's parents, it seems to be like his dad owes a lot of money to some loan sharks, and we're mm-hmm. not sure why. I think they mentioned... His uncle might have given... I think he invested money in a business and the mm. business didn't do well. Mm-hmm. His dad seems to be like people think he's irresponsible because he doesn't have a standard 9 to 5 job to provide for his family. Mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting that Sung Chun is hiding money from his family because usually in dramas when they have this dynamic, the teenager that comes from the really poor family, usually they're hustling for their family. But yeah. Sung Chun is not like that. He's like, y'all are not going to drag me down. Mm-hmm. And he's saving money secretly. And when his sister calls him out, he lets her know, like, no, I'm going to survive for me. <laughs> exactly. He's he's becoming, or he has been, we don't know. He's, he's definitely developed a very independent-minded outlook. I don't know if maybe his friend dying has maybe per, like pushed him further into this direction. But he definitely just seems like he's he's for himself. He doesn't want his family dragging him down. You know what? I actually do think maybe that the family had some, like the, the friend dying had something to do with it. Yeah, no, I think the friend dying definitely was a catalyst for just thoughts he always had. But now mm-hmm. he sees just how serious it is. Mm-hmm. They committed suicide as a group mm-hmm. because the son would then have to inherit the debt you know so he doesn't want to inherit his father's problems exactly and he saw that even when he went to the funeral Mm -hmm. that one woman she was saying why did you kill yourself i need now you're giving me the problem of carrying your debt and she Mm -hmm. was doesn't seem like she was mourning their loss it seemed like she was more angry about the fact that she has the debt problem now well it seemed to me that she was the person they owed uh, that's the, the that's how I interpreted it that they owed her because uh, she then went okay. up to I missed that and told him to pay off the debt who, who I assume was a family member as well maybe the dad's brother okay that makes sense so what didn't we like about the show honestly there's not anything I didn't like there's some questions that I have but I think the show will explain explain those as you know the story develops 
Was there anything you didn't like? Well, you mentioned that the show is very mellow, as in melodramatic. I did feel maybe in the last 15 minutes or so, I definitely liked the way the show was going. But then in the last 15 minutes with, you know, Threat um, saying that he extorted him. And it was just a lot, <laughs> you know, it was a lot at once because we've already seen him get, you know, beat up so many times. Mm-hmm. And, like defeated by life it just felt like the final it was definitely the final straw yes on the camel's back what else is he gonna go through this is a lot his friend died he's being bullied his parents they can't help him really it's just a lot of feeling defeated by life i don't know i just all of a sudden felt extremely drained No, I could see that. Yeah, they definitely ramped up the drama and the last 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I love that it ended on a cliffhanger because we still don't know what's going to happen. But one thing we still haven't covered is the magical element of this, right? Mm -hmm. When he meets that lady, and it's beautifully shot, actually, because you can see the cherry blossom falling. Yes, and it it was a good contrast because there is almost a dark... They did a good job of showing Bleak, uh, mm-hmm. how Bleak his life was. Right. And then that shot when he's going under the bridge and it's bright and it's beautiful. It did look very magical. Oh, here's some hope for your your dreary life. The marble rolls on his feet and he walks over to the old lady's mm-hmm. station and she sells him this spoon. And it's almost incredible that he would even buy a $30 golden spoon. Mm-hmm. But I think it's what you were saying about how that was just a moment of hope for him where mm-hmm. everything else is so dreary. So what's there to lose when buying this golden spoon? But yeah. she tells him the the fairy tale that, you know, if he uses the spoon in someone's house, he can swap with their parents and es- essentially get their life. And he says he decides that he wants to choose Taeyong because Taeyong is the richest person in the school and has everything that he wants. He even spends a couple hours researching the family's inheritance and all the businesses that they own. But oh my goodness, that was such a beautiful moment. You would think the audience is going to be like, okay, well, you're just going to take this kid's life. You're going to take his family. Taeyong is not happy at home. I think they're doing a good job of having the audience be on Song Chan's side. <laughs> yes, you're right. Because th- I think that's the reason why Young is not a nice rich kid. He kind yeah. of has some edge to him because I would definitely feel more bad for him if, you know, it was just an innocent guy that you're robbing his life. Mm-hmm. But because he is a jerk, even the way that he treats Sung Chan, he befriends him, but only to use him to Mm -hmm. appease his father so you know we can kind of forgive okay you can you can get back at him by taking his his wealth and that's okay for the audience but yeah they definitely find a way to make us more sympathetic to St. John even though what he's doing is pretty messed up but you I would also say that Taeyong just comes off as naive he thinks that St. John is just living this free life (laughs) and it's and it's just honestly so bizarre because he's like, oh, he probably has all this free time. He probably gets to do whatever. And that's really not the case. Right. And he's working probably more than he is. Like, we don't ever see him having any kind of fun. And he's almost portrayed as this lazy kid who doesn't want to do any work. Clearly doesn't have any interest in his father's business. And he has this. These, these ideas that the other side is happier. And if I weren't related to these people, if I wasn't living this life, then I'd be happier. Which might be true, but his, his life would also be harder. Right, and he can't understand that because he's always just lived in such extreme wealth that he doesn't understand the concept of Sung Chil having to work all those part-time jobs and how much his life actually sucks. Mm-hmm. Let's see, what else... Have we yet to talk about? Oh, the extortion. Why did he need to go that far? That was my thing, like, to get rid of... I guess that just... It just gets down to, to them seeing people as pawns and not seeing some chat as a real human being. This is supposed to be his opportunity so he can get into college. And you want to get rid of him, not because he even... It didn't seem like it was homework assignments. It was assignments that his father had him do. It wasn't like... 
like he was doing anything wrong with school, but you want to get rid of him completely? I really thought that Taehyung's father would be proud of him for finding a scapegoat to do his work. Because he yeah. seems like that kind of person that would do that himself. But when he finds out, which he only found out because freaking Park Jung-goon, who has been a horrible bully this whole time, spills the secret trying to get back at Sung Chul. But when the father finds out, he decides that Taehyung needs to deal with the problem and get rid of Sung Chul. I thought that was really messed up. Because it's not like Sung Chul was actually, you know, extorting them and asking for money. It had always been Taehyung who reached out to him. Mm-hmm. So... And we're told that it's anywhere between 30 and $300. I would think that's not even a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's well, a... 300 to a billionaire son. Like, right. A... <sighs> yeah, that that was heartbreaking. I wasn't ready for that. And then we get to the scene... I think that was the most disturbing scene. When they're actually arguing about it in the rain, Sung Chun confronts him after that meeting to say, to basically try and trick him into confessing, which I thought was really smart. The only thing I thought he messed up on was telling him, telling him the, like, <laughs> his complete plan. Here's my plan. <laughs> what a fool. <laughs> he was definitely caught monologuing. So once he exposes himself, then Taeyong, you know, starts to fight with him, and that's when he ends up slipping off the bridge. Extremely unsafe. Why are there no bars there? <laughs> right! That was a horrible place. <laughs> and you think you'd meet in another place. It's just meeting in a dark area while it's raining, and that recording would probably sound extremely blurry, too. I think they really use, the writers really use that scene to just show us how. Young is kind of struggling internally because he does try to save Sung Chun mm-hmm. initially, even though they had just had this big fight and he was saying, you know, I'm going to get you. You'll never get away with this. Mm-hmm. He does try to hold him. He's but like a little boy. He, I don't really see him as this. I don't know. He's just he just comes off like a child. Even he tries to save him and then he he realizes how much tr- trouble he could possibly get. Right. And he runs off. And he runs off. Exactly. I think when he tried to call the police, that's what kind of snapped him back to reality. Because he realized, oh, there will be a trail and they'll mm-hmm. be able to track me down and know I was involved and everything yeah. will be exposed. Mm-hmm. Although I feel that was a drama being dramatic because he could have just put an anonymous phone call. Hey, I saw someone fall in the river. Send help. But... He doesn't seem bright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting that sense from him. He's just very little boyish. And that could possibly be because of the way his father treats him too his father treats him he's far too controlling he wants to control every detail of his life and he's not maturing in a self-sufficient way everything is based on what his father says and any type of effort to assert some independence or just to do something he wants to do is he has somebody hanging over his head at every turn no his dad has way too much influence over him it's true and it's gonna mold him He's almost set up to be evil. And there's not really... Even the stepmom is kind of a bitch too. So there's there's really no one around him in his circle to really give him a sense of innocence or some morals. He can't think from, for himself. He, he, oh, he has... I think he does have an idea of right and wrong. But he's just not given the opportunity to really behave in that way because of his environment. Right, and he has no conviction. Even when he mm-hmm. thinks something is, you know, a little off or unsettling, he's easily swayed by whoever else is telling him, no, it's okay. But overall, I think that was a really good episode. I'm, yeah. I can't wait to see what they show us after the cliffhanger. Do you think that the dad is just going to be like, oh, yeah, cool, you can sit and have a meal with us? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? I mean, the show's called The Golden Spoon, so I think something's gonna happen to that effect and he's gonna i think he's gonna allow him to eat i don't know why i just think he is Um, i wonder if he's gonna allow him or i wonder if um what's his name is gonna find a way and sneak in eat like he did last time we'll see yeah the family their family is bizarre (laughs) for sure well i can't wait tune in next time
for Drama Time Podcast. Drama Time Podcast.